today's session on basic radiological anatomy and radiology of head and neck first we will see what is radiological anatomy study of structures of the body or study of anatomy by means of radiological techniques then what are x-rays x-rays are nothing but radiations having specific frequencies and wavelengths which are the parts of electromagnetic spectrum see here is the Ranjan. He has discovered X-rays on November 8, 1895 and he has taken the first skyogram or first radiograph on 22nd December 1895. This is the hand of his wife. This is the first skyogram or first X-ray. Then we will discuss about the X-ray apparatus in brief. See, this is the X-ray apparatus. Here different parts are there. I will tell you one by one. This is the grid cabinet. We can also call it as X-ray film because we will keep the X-ray film here. Then this is the X-ray tube. From here X-rays will be emitted or X-rays will be produced. Then this one is collimator. This is the collimator. This is the mobile table and this one is positioning sponge. Of course this is tool and so these are the different parts of X-ray apparatus. Then what are the other accessories and tools which are used for the radiological or radiographic examination. See here this is the measuring caliper and this is the lead apron and here is the female gonad seal and this is the male gonad seal. These are the right and left marker. These markers you can also call as Mitchell's markers. Then these two are the cassettes or X-ray film containers. Into it we will keep the X-ray film. X-ray films are made up of plastic or polyester and they are coated with the silver halide. Then in the next slide you will see how X-rays will be projected and where we have to keep the subject or patient. See, this is the X-ray tube and this is the X-ray film. In between the X-ray tube and X-ray film, individual should be placed. X-rays will be produced from this X-ray tube and they pass through the body of the subject or body of the patient. After passing through the body, these X-rays will be striking the X-ray film so that X-ray will be created. That X-ray what we are calling radiograph or skyogram. In our body, there will be different types of tissues. Different tissues have different appearance on the X-rays. For example, see here. Here lungs are there. Lungs contain air. So, when the X-rays are passing through the air, they appear on the skyogram or they appear in the X-ray film as black in color. That means, air appears black in color. Then, fat. See here, here is a fat. Fat appears dark grey in color. See here, this is a scalp. No? Scalp contains more amount of fibro fatty tissue. This fibro fatty tissue contains fat. No? That fat appears dark grey color. See here, this is dark grey color. Then, deep to that, here muscles are there. So, these are soft tissues. These soft tissues appear light grey in color. Then, Bones are here. See, these are the bones. Those bones appear half white or light white in color. Then if you observe any metals, see here, here nose pin is there and here ear pin is there. These are metals. X-rays are passing through these metals. They absorb the X-rays so that they appear bright white in color. Very simple. Air appears black in color. Fat appears dark gray. Soft tissues appear light grey, bones appear half white or light white, metals appear bright white in colour. Okay. Then what are the different radiographic views? See here, individual is standing facing towards the x-ray tube. Imagine here x-ray tube is there. This is the x-ray film. So this individual facing towards the x-ray tube. So, X-rays will be passing 
from the anterior aspect of the body to the posterior aspect. So this view what we can call anterior posterior view. Then see here, here individual or subject is facing opposite to the x-ray tube. That means x-rays will be projected from the posterior aspect to the anterior aspect. This view what we are calling posterior anterior view that means POV. This is the APV anterior posterior view. This is POV posterior anterior view. And what are these? These are the lateral views. Right lateral view and left lateral view. And what are these? Oblique views. Left oblique view and right oblique view. I am explaining one more time. See. Rays are passing or X-rays are passing from anterior to posterior side. That's what this view what we are calling anterior posterior view or anterior posterior projection. Then here X-rays are passing from posterior aspect to the anterior aspect. Why? This is the X-ray tube. This is the X-ray tube. And here will be the X-ray tube. From the X-ray tube, X-rays will be produced or X-rays will be projected. If the rays are passing from posterior to anterior side, that view is PA view or posterior anterior view. This is the PA view. See, this is the tube, X-ray tube. Rays are passing from posterior to anterior aspect. So, this is PA view. And this is AP view from anterior to posterior. This is AP view and this is PA view. Then, this is the lateral view. This is the right lateral position. And this is the left lateral position. Then this is left anterior oblique position. And this is the right anterior oblique position. These both positions, this one and this one, corresponding to the PA oblique projections. Then what preparations we have to do before taking the X-ray or skyogram? We should make sure that parts of the body being X-rayed must be uncovered or undressed or we may ask the patient to wear gown. Next one, we have to ask the patient or we have to ask the subject to remove the all ornaments and metal items and jewelries. Then patient should be still. That means patient should not move during the procedure of X-ray. Why? When we are taking the X-ray, when patient moves, which creates the haziness of X-ray. And when we are taking the chest X-rays, we have to ask the patient to take deep breath and hold for some time and we should ask the patient to keep his hands on the waist. Then position of the patient should be explained before taking x-ray only. So these are the preparations before taking x-rays. So these are the very basics related to the radiographic anatomy. Then we will study about radiology of skull. After studying the Basics of radiological anatomy. Now we can study the radiology of head and neck. In the radiology of head and neck, there will be some special views are there, like lateral view, water view, cardiac view, anterior posterior view, and some other views are there. We will see one by one. First, if we take lateral view to study the general features of head and neck region, lateral view will be used during taking X-ray of this lateral view. You have to ask the subject or the patient to keep one cheek against the X-ray field so that X-rays will be passed through the opposite side of the head and neck. When you take the X-ray in the lateral view, we can see the skyogram like this. In the lateral view of head and neck region, what features you can see? This is the skull cap. Here, outer part is dark white and inner part also dark white and the intervening part is grey in colour. That means the outer part is hard substance and the inner part is also hard substance and the intervening part is soft. That means it is made up of spongy bone or cancellous bone. So this outer part what we are calling outer table and this inner part what we are calling inner table, intervening diploidy. So this is outer table, this is inner table and intervening diploidy. Right? Then in the lateral view you can see frontal air centers. Actually this bone is frontal bone. So within the frontal bone we can found the frontal air sinus. Then here this plate is there. This plate is orbital plate of frontal bone. This plate what we are calling orbital plate of frontal bone. 
right? Just below that, we can found the cupriform plate of S9. Cupriform plate of S9. Then, if you go a little backwards, see here. Here on fossa is there. This fossa, what we are calling cella tarsica. We can also call it as pituitary fossa. See here also. This is cella tarsica or pituitary fossa. These are bounded anteriorly by tuberculum cella and posteriorly by dorsum cella along with anterior clinoid process and posterior clinoid process. Below this cella tarsica, you can see one air sinus here. This air sinus, what we are calling sphenoidal air sinus. So this is sphenoidal air sinus. Then this is what orbit. This is the maxilla. Within the maxilla also, you can found one air sinus. This air sinus, what we are calling maxillary air sinus. This is the alveolar process of maxilla contains teeth. If you go a little backwards, here one condyle is there. See, this is the condyle. Here also you can see. This is the condyle. This condyle is condylar process of mandible. And in front of the condylar process, here one bony projection is there. This is coronoid process of the mandible. So, this is the coronoid process and here is the coronoid process. And what is this process? This is the condylar process. This condylar process articulates with the mandibular force of the temporal bone and forms the temporal mandibular joint. If you go a little behind, here highly opaque structure is there or radiologically opaque structure is there. This radiologically opaque structure or very dense structure is petrous part of temporal bone. Here you can found the external acoustic meatus and you can see the margin of auricle and you can found the ear pin here. So this is the auricle. Right? Then behind the auricle you can found some small small air filled spaces are there. See here some black spaces are there. These spaces are mastoid air flow. Then if you coming little behind see here in the center we can found the external occipital crest and this is the external occipital cortebrus. Then this is the mandible and here is the nose and you can found the nose pin here. See and what is this? This is the nasal bone and see here behind the frontal air sinus you can see one bony projection here this is vista garage and here is the roof of orbit here is the floor of orbit and this is the heart palate so here also same picture vista garage roof of orbit floor of orbit here you can see few sinuses these are ethmoidal air sinuses here is sphenoidal air sinuses and this is the cella tricica anterior clinoid process, posterior clinoid process, tuberculum cell, dorsum cell, and this is the clivus. Here is the auricle. Then here is petrous part of temporal bone. Within this, we can found the external acoustic meatus. This is the heart palate. Right? And here frontal air sinus. Here maxillary air sinus. This is mandible. And this is the condylar process of the mandible and here is the coronary process of the mandible and here you can see hyoid bone also see this is hyoid bone and this is the first cervical vertebrae it means anterior tubercle of first cervical vertebrae here is the posterior tubercle of first cervical vertebrae then here dense or odontoid process of axis then this is third fourth and fifth cervical vertebrae are present here so these are the features you can see in the Laterally. Here also same structures. Maxillary air sinus, maxillary air sinus. Frontal air sinus, frontal air sinus. Here, ethmoidal air sinuses. Here, ethmoidal air sinuses. Here is sphenoidal air sinuses. Here also sphenoidal air sinuses, just below this. And this is pituitary fossa. Here is petrous part of temporal bone. This is external acoustic meatus. And here, mastoid air cell. This is mastoid process. Here, condyle of mandible articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone and forms the temporal mandibular giant. Here, this is coronoid process. And this is the mandible, this is the maxilla. Clear? And here is the nasal bone. This is the cupriform plate of S9. And here, projection is there. This is Vista gallus. This is the floor of the orbit. This is the roof of the orbit and this is the 
floor of the orbit. Then here I add root, here also I add root. This is the add derivative root, this is the fourth derivative root of R plus. And this is as. Then if you see another view, this view is water view. In water view, you have to ask the subject to place his mouth and nose against the X-ray thing and we should ask the patient to open the mouth. Then rays will be passed or rays will be projected from behind. This view is helpful for the examination of air sciences. See here. This is frontal air sciences. Here is ethmoidal air sciences. Of course, this is orbit. Here is maxillary air sciences. Here also maxillary air sciences. And here is geographic base. And this is the geographic arch. Since she has opened the mouth from oral cavity in the posterior part, we can see the sphenoidal air sciences. So, here you can see the sphenoidal air sciences. These are the frontal air sciences. This is orbit. This is supraorbital margin. This is lateral orbital margin. This is infraorbital margin. This is geomatic base. And here is the geomatic arch. Here, maxillary air sciences. Here is septum is there. Actually, this is nasal cavity. Nasal cavity has been divided into two halves by nasal septum. This nasal septum will be formed by mainly two bones. Perpendicular plate of ethmoid and oma. Those bones are forming the nasal septum. Then from here we can see one ridge. This ridge is belongs to petrous part of temporal bone. So that's what this ridge what we are calling petrous ridge. This view is very helpful for the examination of air sciences. If there is healthy air sciences, these air sciences are dark black in color. And if there is any infection or any accumulation of mucus within the air sciences which leads to appearance of haziness that is about the water view then another view is cardwell's view it is almost like your posterior anterior view in this view you have to ask the patient or subject to keep the head and nose against the x-ray plane and rays are projected from behind but here there is a little difference between the po view and cardwell's view the angle of rays will be little oblique view so that the angle between the rays and the x-ray film is around 15 to 20 degree that means rays will be passing like this this view what we are calling cardwell's view right and this view we can also call as occipital frontal view in this view also we can examine the air sciences very clearly especially ethmoidal air sciences see here here and here. These are ethmoidal air sciences. These ethmoidal air sciences will be very clearly visible in this view. And we can also observe concha. See here, nasal concha. Here and here. And we can see the nasal septum here. And here, anterior nasal spine. Here is maxillary air sinus. Here, frontal air sinus. Here, ethmoidal air sinuses. And in this view, we can also see the sutures. Sagittal suture is visible here. Frontal air sinuses are visible, and this is the superior orbital margin. This is the superior orbital fissure, and here is the inferior orbital margin. And this is the cribriform plate of ethmoid. See here, this is the cribriform plate of ethmoid, and here ethmoidal air sinuses you can form, and this is the nasal septum. See, this is the nasal septum, and here you can form the petrous ridge. This ridge what we are called Petrus Ridge. Then next view is AB view with opening of mouth. This view will be used mainly for the identification of fracture of upper cervical vertebrae. See here, this is atlas, this is axis, and this is the quadrantoid process. So this is the transverse process of atlas. Here also transverse process of atlas. This is the inferior articular surface of atlas. This is the superior articular surface of axis. Right? And this projection is there. This projection what we are calling quadrantite process. This is the body of axis. See here. This is quadrantite process. This is anterior arch of atlas. This is the transverse process of atlas. This is the anteroposterior view without opening of mouth. Here you can see coronal sutures. See here. This is coronal sutures. This is sagittal sutures. This suture is. And here, 
this which is the lambda at theta see this is the lambda at theta what is this this is vista galaxy and on either side we can found the frontal air cells here death matter air cells here here and here this is the lesser wing of sunite see here this is lesser wing of sunite and here is a greater wing of sunite in between we can see one fissure here also and here also this fissure is superior orbital fissure here is the nasal septum then we can found the concha see here this is inferior concha and here middle concha and here superior concha if you observe carefully just below the superior orbital fissure we can found one more foramen here this foramen this foramen protrude this is the petrous ridge this is a ridge it is because of petrous part of temporal bone that's what this ridge what we are calling petrous ridge this is the superior alveolar crust of maxilla and this is the inferior alveolar crust of mandible right here also you can see the same structures next we use anterior posterior view to show the lower cervical vertebrae so in this case x ray film will be behind and x ray beam will be projected from the anterior aspect if you take the x ray in this view sciagram will be like this in this view what structures you can found see here here is the fourth cervical vertebrae fifth sixth seventh and t1 t2 t3 like this you can found the vertebrae right then here you can see one black color shadow this black color shadow is trachea this is the shadow of trachea here you can see the spinous process see here these are the spinous process right then lateral to that you can found the pedicles see here these are the pedicles of vertebrae and the lateral most part you can found the transverse process these are transverse process if we coming to the next view this is the lateral cervical view or neutral position in this position what structures you can found see here this is the posterior arch of atlas and here is the anterior arch of atlas that means this is the first cervical vertebrae this is second cervical vertebrae what is this axis axis having one projection this projection what we are calling odontoid process right this odontoid process will be projected up so this is the dense or odontoid process right then this is the spinous process of c2 then here we can found one black color shadow because it contains a what is this this is trachea behind this soft tissue we know that soft tissue will be appear in the x-ray as light gray in color that means here esophagus is there and pre and para vertebral muscles are present that's what it is light gray in color here you can found joint between the articular facets also see here this is superior articular facet and here is a inferior articular facet this joint is apophyseal joint there is a space between the bodies of vertebrae in this case interotracheal disc will be accommodated right and here you can see the hyoid bone and here external apostatic meatus and this is the petrous part of temporal bone and here mastoid air cells till now what we are studied all those are plain x rays only special x rays we will study in further session and ct and mri also we will study once we complete the brain that's it for this session thank you very much